So this is the uh, work session uh, for the Minnetrista City Council, August 3rd. And first order of business is to do a roll call, make sure we're all here. So I'm Lisa Whalen, I'm the mayor. I'm gonna, as I call your name, you can just say here. Uh, Pam Mortensen. Here. Mike Molitor. Here. John Chamberlain. Here. Shannon Bruce. Here. City Clerk Chris Lindquist. Here. Um, Director of Administration Allie Palfo. Here. Public Works Superintendent Gary Peters. Here. Um, City Administrator Mike Baroni. I am here. Finance Director Brian Grimm. I am here also. All right, Community Development Director David Abel. I am here. And Chief of Police Paul Fall. Here. And also joining us, our City Engineer Allison Fowski. I am here. All right, so with that, uh, we'll move on to our agenda. We only have one item this evening, and that's a budget discussion. And I'm going to hand this over, I believe, to Mr. Grimm. Are you? Can I take this right away? Yes, I can. Yes, unless Mike uh, Baroni has anything to start with, I can uh, start um, with the presentation. Uh, go right ahead, Brian. I'm good to go. Okay. Well, what I'll probably do then is, um, Mayor and Council, start in the packet on page 26 of the work session, which is the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the PowerPoint and then go back to the memo and the documents after I'm done. Or I guess if there's any questions um, of the PowerPoint, maybe we can answer as we go, or if it's easier just to, um, at the end, um, make note and then go back to certain pages. Um, I don't know, with a, <laughs> it's a little different presenting a budget information with a, in a Zoom environment versus when I can actually uh, see everybody and sort of get the cues that someone wants to ask a question or whatever. So um, I'll start out and um, I guess we'll sort of uh, play it by ear and go from there. So yeah, it's just okay. um, um, rolling through the, uh, obviously each year, the main reason we um, start talking about this um, in August here is because to uh, be able to certify a uh, Preliminary tax levy by the county's deadline of September 30th. So that's um, our uh, main our, our outcome that will happen over the next you know few meetings. Hopefully, as far as coming to a consensus on that preliminary tax levy, which is a uh, a ceiling, which is uh, our maximum levy for uh, 2021. Uh, as far as the timeline, so we're uh, meeting here tonight on August 3rd to go over initial um the, the staff budget or budget working group presentation. Uh, obviously, there'll be uh, more meetings on this. We have August 17th and also September 8th, 21st, our regularly scheduled meetings to be able to talk about and then subsequently adopt um, a preliminary levy by that September 30th deadline. Um, so the items each year that we usually talk about is obviously overarching as the city's financial stability. You, uh, balancing how much we levy versus um, how much we uh, have in our fund balance reserves and how and how to use that. Uh, each year we always look at our five-year um, capital equipment improvement plan, our CIP, and how to finance that. Uh, look at our service levels if there's anything we want to do, you know, differently in hand. Or, you know, we added back the drug task force a couple few years ago, so we usually try to look at um, service levels each year. And then, uh, um, you know, another item that we've really focused on probably the last five to 10 years now is uh, the pavement management plan and trying to do more of our roads and keep our roads in, in good shape across the city. Uh, next slide, or, or I guess on page 30 there of your packet was just the initial, but it pulls together all the different components of the, of the levy. And this was, uh, I guess, a version one or a first crack at it. Um, you can see um, general fund levy would be a little over 3.5 million. Debt levy about that 851,000. Roads was, would go from 600 to 700,000. That's sort of in that phase in increase that um, we've been doing to tackle more roads. 
uh, CIP levy, which can try to add back to that so we don't have to do um, equipment certificates all the time. So an option would be to bump that up from 50 to 100. Um, you know, years ago, that levy was as high as a few hundred thousand and sort of got phased down back sort of in conjunction as we started allocating money towards roads back in early you know, 2011, 12, 13 time frame. And then you can see the uh, total gross levy would be 5162 rounding. Fiscal disparities, we don't get our number from that from the county to um, uh, later in September, I believe, or mid to end of September. So um, I just plugged in the same amount as last year for now, but you can see the trend that's usually gone up. So hopefully we get a little more money from that to uh, net out our gross levy down to our net levy, um, which in this version is about 5027000 uh, Version two um, was basically similar to version one. The only change Brian, was that. Hold on. Oh, Brian, yeah, Brian, I have a question real quick. So on the fiscal disparities, do we have any inclination? Is the county going to be reducing that, keeping it the same? I mean, have you talked to anybody at the county? I'm not sure where, where they're going to come in in terms of their finances. And the other question is, is the uh, formula going to be changing at all? Do you know any of that? I haven't heard that the formula is changing. I, mean, I think it's usually just based on it comes down to how much commercial property you have within your city. And then there's some that uh, I guess are uh, contributors versus receivers or whatever. So this is one of the, the few type of programs that we receive some money on, it seems. But um, I haven't heard that anything's where the program's been reduced or anything to that. I can uh, follow up and, and okay. see if there's anything where it's being cut by 10 20 percent but our or change or whatever but i i haven't heard anything to that effect okay i think before the before we get too far into it we should at least check just to see if that might be changing okay, that's all i have okay yep i'll make a note of that and then um roll forward to on, on uh, page 31 is basically a uh, second version of the main change there if you go down to the second one, the debt fund levy comes down by um, about 65000 and it would be not issuing um, equipment certificates um, for 2021. And that, that basically would be pretty inherent on the fact of um, moving out the, the one piece of equipment or the biggest piece of, of um, dollar amount, I guess. That public works, or you know, um, Gary Peters and his staff have been as far as that uh, the grader that was in the CIP for about I think 240,000 or whatever. So if we move that out to 2022 or, or something to that effect, or 23, if we're able to, um, we would be that our total Brian, 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 this Brian, is your me. audio is breaking up. Could you get a better audio signal somewhere else? Oh, please. Um, or Brian, Brian, go off of your um, speaker phone, maybe. That might help. Oh, okay. Uh, is this better at all, or no, or still? Yeah, that's better. Still that's not? Better. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. I might have just been a little too far away, so I'm sorry about that. Um, okay. Does that just sound better? Yep, so far. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll make I'll make a conscious effort to um, be closer here. Um. So, uh, basically, uh, the uh, the difference would be that equipment certificate not issuing in 2021, and that helps to reduce the debt levy because we we have a equipment certificate that we issued in 2015 dropping off for this year. We're able to um make that change in this um uh, basically iteration here. So. You can see the difference. The total gross levy comes down, and then the, the net levy comes down to about four million nine hundred sixty-two thousand. There. So, I don't know, anyone has any questions on that, or otherwise, I'll, no, we'll um, we'll run through okay. the questions and um, when we go. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and then uh, the next page is just a. Uh, Basically, the uh, taken from our audit presentation that shows our um, our fund balance or our percent of to basically general fund expenditures 
you can see um, the trend there. We've used a little bit of fund balance when you go back to 2015 or some fund balance, but we're still at a decent percentage in that sort of uh, mid-50 range. So I think we've been prudent as far as using our, our dollars there to help them um, balance our, what we ask for levy and uh, using cash on hand. So that's some, um, just wanted to reiterate that there or show that. There are two, I'm sorry, there are two columns for 2020. Yes, on the, on the budget for trend analysis. I, yeah. version two. Oh, yep. Um, you're talking on page 33 there. Yep. Yep, yeah. So that, yeah, the, the last column is just 2021. I think when I copied that column over, I, I noticed that after I put that out on Thursday. So, um, but yeah, the, 2021 is the far right column, so that would okay. be based on the uh, the tax levy with the uh, the, the five million, basically 5.02 there. Um, but yeah, this slide's just showing how we've used some general fund you know reserves to be able to help them um, keep our our levy more at a you know inflationary you know or increase to try to manage that as well as then keep our uh, our fund balance percentage, you can see there in 2019, it's at 54%, 2020 projected to be 51, and then 2021 there, the far right column would be about you know 46%, so projected, based on obviously how 2020 um, finishes up, et cetera. Okay. So then the next slide um, is tries to give a quick glimpse of uh, a tax impact, <clears throat> excuse me, um, so base, uh, this assumes that a, a 4% valuation increase, that seems to be the average increase that people will be looking at for their 2020 valuation for 2021 tax purposes from the information we got from the county. So if you use that 4.52% uh, increase from that first scenario of the net levy with 3.4% growth, what again has extrapolated from um, the county's uh, information, you see that um, the different uh, tax amounts and that, that would be 2020 to 2021. So the first column there should be property value 2020, property value 2021, and then the tax amounts would be respectively for 2020 and 2021 also. So you can see there um, a $350,000 property now would be valued at 364, and you can see the different, the tax amounts for each of those years, 866, 883. So it'd be about $17 increase, you know, dollar and a half a month or so and then you can see it for both the five hundred thousand dollar and a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar property what those tax amounts would look like you know on average you know basically everyone's value goes up a little differently and stuff so this is just using a sort of a median or an average and then um you can see it's thirty seven dollars and fifty two dollars for those respective properties on those other um the five hundred and the seven fifty which have become five twenty Brian, this is yep. Shannon. Um, do you have a, this is based on version one, is that correct? Yeah, this would be on the, the one that's the higher, correct, yep. Do you, do you have a table that you can show us on version two as well? Um, I can run that. I think basically when I ran that version at the 3.1, 3.2%, because because of the growth factor, it was almost pretty even. I mean, it was obviously less than this version, but it was, I'm trying to, you know, um, I could definitely run that, but it would be something that was very close to where not much of a change at all. Okay, I, I think visually it would be nice to see that. Yeah, I could um, I could calculate that and even send that out tomorrow or, or whatever I guess people would, would, would like or whatever. Yeah, Brian, what you, or what you, you could do when it says difference, you could put the 4.52% and then you could have another column that would list the 3.1% or whatever that is and then have those amounts in that column. Then we have them next, side by side for comparison. Well, but the, the amounts change and the tax amounts change so you can't just reflect it in one column. Correct. It, it might sense. get a little, uh, yeah, yeah, it's possible. It might get a little busy, but yeah, there's, yeah, I can look at, I, I mean, it's, this is easy to, to run many different scenarios, so I could run a, a one at the, that, that second version. That's that's not a problem. Okay, okay. thanks. All right. Okay. Yep. 
And I, yeah, I sort of want to double check with the county because I think the values I have right now are for real estate, which is the vast majority, but there's some personal property valuation that I think I, they need to provide yet too, which actually can help lower our tax rate even more, I guess, based on just more valuation in the city. The next slide is just more to give reference as far as the overall, I won't spend a whole lot of time, but on a 2020 property, this would be in the West Tonka School District. You can see the different um, portions of um, the Hennepin County School City and then basically the other taxing districts. You can see, um, you know, on the West Tonka property, we're about 23% of the property tax, 1167 That's on a $472,000 property, which is pretty close to our median value. I think it's right around that, four, four seventy-five, four eighty. Um, and then if you scroll ahead to the next um, page, you can see it just, uh, depending on what school district is, you can make, it can make a big difference. So the, uh, this one was Waconia School District. So you can see the, the tax bill there on the same valued property. Uh, decent amount, obviously, based on what the school decision, or, you know, individual school district makes for their decisions. Um, let's go on to the last Brian. few slides. I have a question, Brian. Are the, the CRF funds reflected in any of these numbers yet? Um, that's a good question. And not, no, because basically we didn't know how the council wanted to, to spend them. I think I made a note in the packet that some of the fund balance we're using, I guess, can either be fund balance at large or CRF. It's, it's basically the, it's, Temporarily in the general fund right now until the you know council makes some final decisions on how to to spend it. So you know, I don't think it's been allocated um, distinctly or de definitively. It's, it's more just in, in within the total fund balance, and it hasn't actually been taken into account as far as added added back into um, not knowing if it's going to stay in the general fund or, or do something else or whatever. So. So it's not reflected in how we're calculating the, the preliminary tax levy? That would be correct, yep, yep. Okay. Based on yeah, not knowing exactly yeah, how, um, not making a final decision at a council level yet. But basically, it's, the, the budget scenario is laid out is, is leaving the CRF funds aside and, and not including them at all right now. Okay, thanks. Okay, so um, then yeah, so on, on page thirty-seven there, uh, the uh, this some of the budget assumptions, commitments, questions. Uh, so there's uh, in labor contracts or in non-union salaries and benefits. There's a you know a budget, a placeholder for those right now. Um, funding sources for the C at capital equipment plan would be, and what we decide to. Um, finance for the uh, equip, uh, equipment, the final uh, CIP plan. There could be a potential equipment certificate or maybe that could wait till 2022. And then um, the pavement management plan has the 100,000 increase as part of uh, the phase in, you know, using as a roads plan that we've been using. Uh, some other further ones on page 38. So the general fund reserve, we use about 250, 245,000 of that to help keep the general fund levy at the amount it's proposed at, like about the general funds going up about 2% to the levy, or just comparing year to year over the general fund levy. And then the, uh, as mentioned earlier, the uh, projected fund balance would be about 46% at the end of 2021. So that keeps above our minimum 40%. It keeps us between 40 and 50. And I think it's a number that staff felt comfortable with. Brian, uh, and I guess the last one. Hey, Brian. Oh. Uh, yep, just yep. to clarify uh, on that, so those percentages do not include the five hundred seventy-nine thousand. That is correct. Yes, yeah. So that's um, because okay. basically that's m money that would be above and beyond what was originally uh, budgeted for. I guess revenue slash reimbursement. So that would yeah. So if we put that all back into the general fund, that forty-six percent number would go up. Okay. Thank you. And then, yeah, last, I think we talked about um, a few of these things already. You know, obviously the uh, 
September 30th deadline is what we're tracking for, and we've always met that. Or so <laughs> I'm sure you know we'll figure out something by then this year again. Um, there's a couple of net levy options were presented. Um, but we obviously we want feedback from the city council and direction as far as um how that sounds and if what needs to be changed or or whatever. Um, you know, the, the roads, general fund levy, how to fund the equipment plan, and um. Yeah, maybe now it's just a good time as any to uh, answer further questions or dive into more of the documents in the packet more um, and uh, go from there. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Um, all right, so we'll start with um, with council. Um, any questions on the presentation that Brian just made? All right, with that, um, why don't I kind of go down the line here and just kind of ask for some some general input. Um, we'll start with um, Mike Molitor. Maybe you want to weigh in. Uh, yeah, Gen generally, uh, you know, looks, We're getting, looks pretty good. Hold on, the, Mike. We're getting a lot of feedback. Is there any way of eliminating that? Okay, Mike, go ahead. Um, the one thing that I, I think on either one of these options that's presented is we've been upping the road levy by 125,000 each year, and this next year we're only proposed doing 100. Um, just given the cost structure that we've seen, uh, I really think we need to do another 125 again. Um, you know, potential sources for that maybe bring that CIP portion down to 75,000 rather than 100 um, or potentially uh, take some out of the general uh, levy fund but um, I, I scaling it back to 100,000 a year or increase given what we've seen for costs and needs uh, I'm not comfortable with that I think we got to do at least what we have been doing um, at a minimum Okay. Any other comments, Mike? Um, I not not really. I, I think uh, I'm a little bit concerned about the increase in the general fund. Um, that's uh, if we're going to have to cut something there. That's probably the place I would be looking to. Uh, other than that, I'm fine. Okay, but if you say if you're going to be cutting in the general fund. Um, where would you cut then? What would your, if you look at that, what would you cut? Well, I, given that this is our first discussion, I'd have to go through that. But I mean, we went from, um, and let me find the numbers here. Um, it's going up. We've we've kept it flat, as Brian pointed out, for a number of years. We didn't increase last year, um, so I'm not comfortable. Doing a, another large increase this year. I mean, we <clears throat> so we went from three two to three four last year, and now we're going to three five. Um, you know, if we're going to again, it, it's it's one option. If we um, we're going to put more money into roads, maybe we take the twenty five thousand out of that general fund, or we take it out of the, the CIP. But um, I'd have to do a little more digging on the three point five versus the three four nine to see. Uh, what specifically I would do. Okay. All right. I'm, Fair just, I'm just putting that out there as an option. If yeah. the easiest way to do that yeah. would be to probably take it instead of going up 150000 on the CIP to only go up 25000 Um If we're not comfortable with that, then that's my second choice. So. Okay. All right. Um, Pam, you want to weigh in? Yeah, I agree. I'd like to stay focused on the road. I think we've made great progress, and I'd like to stay on track for that. Um, I do think an important element is that figuring out the 579000 that we're saving. Now, I know you guys were, um, staff was meeting or uh, hearing more about that. Um, when will you have more clear direction on how that money can be spent? Maybe the um, um, mayor Mike. and council. Yeah, so um, mayor, mayor and council, um, we have that slated for discussion item later on during the regular council meeting. Um, we can go into much more detail about that, but I can at least 
I have, I'm fairly confident that we will be able to use all $579,000. And then, and, and what that gets used for, I wouldn't say is irrelevant, but I think we have enough expenses just in police salaries and stuff from the beginning of March to be able to use all that uh, up um, probably sometime in August here. Um, so it's not gonna be an issue on trying to use up the money. And then essentially what that does is that probably frees up a similar amount of money in our fund, in our budget. And then that's the point, uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of ourselves here, but that's the point where I think council will need to discuss on what to do with that 579,000. It would be from our own money. We don't, we're not explicitly tied to the CRF money, the CARES money. Um, we have a way to spend all that. And then you can figure out how to deal with an offset from our own budget to any number of projects um that could come our way it could be roads it could be any number of things so so our i think at the last meeting you were not 100 percent certain that that money could be used towards the police is that still uh do we know for sure well i'm never going to say for sure <laughs> because even the people giving the presentation and the webinar last week always hedge their bet. But I feel fairly confident after looking at all the materials that we've received. And, and I know Brian is in the same situation I am because he participated in listening to that webinar that we, we more than qualify to use all our money um, for, our, for our police department. Um, to cover those expenses. So, I mean, I'm about as sure as I can be without like carving it in granite. I, if they're not carving it in granite, neither am I, but pr pretty certain we can use it. So this is, this um, is Shannon. I, and hold on just a second, I, I, just a minute. Um, no, I, I was I, speaking uh, first. So I, I, I have something so. to say about the coronavirus relief fund and the, the yeah, rules that's what I was around it. Too. Because I'm looking at the certification form, and one of the things that we signed, or you signed when you received that money, it says on the form, and I'm just reading directly from the form, and these are the rules, it says the distributed funds will be used by the local government only to cover costs that were not accounted for in the budget most recently approved as of March 27, 2020 for the local government. So that, that means if these funds were in our budget, for payroll expenses, we can't use the CRF funds for those purposes unless, and I attended the, the, um, the webinar, unless those payroll expenses, those people that were, were paid, their duties were substantially changed to do something specifically COVID-19 related, which they weren't. So I'm, I'm having trouble understanding what you're saying because what, what I'm reading is that payroll expenses are not are, are not a legitimate use of the CRF funds. Well, the LMC put out a CARES Act funding information guide with a lot of mm -hmm. uh, frequently asked questions. And one of the questions was, and they've got answers to this. This is one, one of the questions was, my council wants to know how other cities are spending their CARES Act funds. Is there a data on this? And they said, there's not data, but they did a round table uh, discussions with 200 cities the week of July 20. And from those conversations, there were some common themes that they observed about how cities plan to use the funds. And one of the first item is payroll for public safety, administration devoted to pandemic management, administrative leave, unemployment. So that's the very first one. So I don't think that we're alone in making the assumption that we are able to use the CARES money to cover our police payroll. But, but what you just so said with that, that public safety, what you just said were public safety um, personnel were used, those, those funds were used, devoted to, 
to COVID-19 purposes, and ours were not. Uh, Madam Mayor, I can... For, for, a, bigger, for a bigger city, oh, I, I can see that, but for Minnetrista, I'm having a hard time seeing that. Okay, hold on. Chief Falls, maybe you could weigh in on this as well. Thank you. Yes, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but I think this is a point that has been a, a topic of discussion in, in many, many cities. And as chiefs, we've had this discussion over and over, and the consent, overwhelming consensus among the attorneys and the chiefs is that we do qualify. And I will read a, a piece of information that came out uh, of the CARES Act. And it, it said uh, because everyone was trying to decide whether or not they qualified, they they said as a matter of administrative convenience in light of the emergency nature of this program, a state, territorial, local, or tribal government may presume that payroll costs for public health and public safety employees are payment for services substantially dedicated to mitigating or responding to the COVID-19 public health emergency. In other words, they're just saying up front, they're just stating that it's a matter of administrative convenience, that they are just presuming that to be the case. So in other words, we as a city don't have to prove that. So I had a conversation earlier today with our administrator and what I was saying to Mike is, and I think this would be kind of a, a good uh, route to take, we can plan on using that for city, uh, for the police department, but until November 15th when we have to file our forms, I don't think we should plan on spending that money in other departments until we're told, no, this form is filled out incorrectly and you have to return the funds. So uh, the other thing I talked to Mike about is, well, maybe we want to think of a couple other areas in which we could also use the funds as a COVID-19 related um, cost. So those are discussions that we can have um, at a later date, what I would recommend is we don't look at those funds right now, today, as being able to use them for um, offsetting our levy. That's not to say we can't in the future, but today I think we need to look at it as we might be able to use them. That way we're safe. If we have to return some funds, then we haven't allocated them elsewhere, and if we can retain them, we can always add them or, or designate their use at that time. So I, I, have that, I have one question. I have one question for uh, uh, Chief Falls. Um, were were Minnetrice's public service personnel substantially dedicated to COVID-19 activities? Was the majority of their time substantially dedicated to COVID-19 activities? as far as you know? Well, what they're saying, I would say, if it were up to me to make that decision, if I had to prove that, no. Um, but the fact of the matter is they're presuming that to be the case because we're responding to COVID-19 related calls. And quite frankly, everything we do, uh, we had to respond differently as a result of COVID-19. And that's why they made that an administrative rule and are presuming that to be the case. That's my and, understanding. Uh, yeah, and I'll just piggyback on that. Paul just read a section from the uh, FAQ that came out in late June. The sentence he didn't start with, it says, this fund is designed to provide ready funding to address unforeseen financial needs and risks created by the COVID-19 public health emergency. So I would say, if you're asking me, that we had a lot of risk, our department it, our police department, every time they went on a call, call we're at risk. Um, and that's why they've um, done what they've done as far as how they approach any kind of call these days, ever since March. So um, as Paul stated earlier, it's they're assuming you've, you've had to change your approach on how you handle your police duties in your city, big or small. And you got to remember, this was written for pretty much every community in the country, not just us. So um, so there's gonna be a lot of uh, leeway and wiggle room that they built into this on purpose, so. Right, I think just for clarification uh, real quickly, I, I think uh, 
the the reason they presume that to be the case is is because then we don't have to go through and prove that every minute of our shift was spent in a COVID-19 fashion. But the risk is the piece that Mike pointed out. That's a good point, Mike, because we have uh, substantially increased risk in our duties, and that's why they presume that to be the case. So are they going to provide, this is Pam, are they going to provide something in writing that tells us that definitely that our, the payroll can be used for a police force? Because it's just, it's, I'm just very cautious about getting this money with no loophole. I mean, no, you just don't get anything for free anymore. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I, I, I completely understand your, your, tentativeness on this and believe me we are as well but i think you're going to see a majority of cities at least that i've heard i've not heard too many i mean there's other places that have other large issues and it's mostly due to the fact that they have um they're a larger city they have uh, uh more funding um uh, we have 579 thousand. that's a lot of money but you look at some of the mm -hmm. distributions to some of the other cities uh it's it, it's quite it's in the millions four and five and six millions of some of the large metro cities that are all that far away from us and so but they have other needs they have other things that have happened to them uh that they you know if they have a community center or a that, that's been closed down or 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 an athletic center uh that's not been operating i mean uh, th those are the kind of things that they can document but we don't have that but we do have a police department that has been impacted by this and and we do have that sentence on that certification form that that the city swears to that we are not using these funds that to cover costs that were not accounted for in the budget most recently approved and that that's something we, we either we either signed that document and said we wouldn't use these funds for things that were already in our budget or or were were or we're going to lie and use them for something that that was. And I'm sorry, I'm I'm just I can't get around that because we we signed a document saying that we wouldn't use the funds for something that was budgeted, and we either honor our commitments or we we don't. And that would, that would it, it's pretty black and white to me. Uh, well, there's a lot of there's a lot of interpretation around that, and I, I tried to talk about that just with a few things that have come out since the 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 form that that we signed so um i'm not convinced that we are not i'm not convinced we're doing it incorrectly i'm just not again i think what i said before was i don't think we should put it in the budget and no, we should i don't think we should plan on having it right now i think we should um continue kind of status quo like like we are right now and then in, and if we submit the uh, form um, I think we have to submit it by or before November 15th and we state that we're using it for um, employee for um, um, police force for our um, safety department if they have an issue with that they would then let us know and then if we have to pay it back we pay it back if they don't have an issue and they say, okay, that's appropriate, um, you're good to go, then then we have that extra money there that we can then decide what we're going to do with. I, I'm, I'm a little leery about using it right now um, and then having to pay it back. And obviously, we're not trying to do anything illegal. We're simply, um, if we follow the rules that they've established, and we submit the form as to what we're using it for, and then they approve that, I'm not sure that that's being anything other than following the rules. So um, with we that, can, we, um, we, want... we can talk about this at our, our council meeting because I have some, I, I sent some other suggestions about how these funds could be used, and I think ultimately it's the council's decision on how that is, is going to happen. So. I'm I'm fine delaying this until our council meeting. 
Well, but, so what I want to do is, Pam, um, you had any other um, recommendations or suggestions for the budget? No, I just uh, I just do want to stay focused on roads. Uh, I think we were, we've done a really good job of moving forward. I want to stay on that track. And um, just looking for anything else, um, you know, as, as the months go on here. All right. Um, John, would you like to weigh in? Uh, right. I don't know if I can add I, anything. We're not looking at individual line items not right now. Is that correct? Just the general statement? If you want to make some comments. John, feel free to make some comments. We really need to give staff some direction. So sure. make well, comments, whatever you'd like. Well, first of all, I agree with previous council members. I, I'd like to see the, the road uh, at the 125000 um, amount. Uh, we know there's a lot of it that has to be done out there yet. Uh, the another 25000 there will put us that much closer to being able to do the, the three roads next summer, the hard scrabble plus the other two, based on uh, documentation or projections that we'll have, we'll discuss at the, in the regular council meeting. So I'd like to, to keep that there. Whether that again means to dip into the reserves a little bit more or reduce some other place, such as CIP or, or not having a certificate, moving uh, capital expenditures from this year to next, or next year to the following. Uh, and in regards to that, I do have a question of Mr. Peters. The On page um, 19, the spending on the heavy equipment, uh, there's a comment there that says that overhaul cost would be two-thirds. So is it two-thirds of the 240000 or is is that the overhaul price? I believe that's the overhaul price, but Mr. Peters, are you still there? Uh oh, Brian, do you can you answer that? Yeah, the way I understand it is that Gary was making a note there that I think the 240 would be to actually replace it. And I think he was trying to say so. I think uh, was it a year or two ago? I think we did where something was going to be like 300,000 to replace it, but we could overhaul for like a little over a hundred. So in this case, what the note is trying to say is that it would be cost prohibitive, sort of. To, if we overhauled it, it still would be 160,000. So at that point, it's probably it tips the scales to make it where a, a new purchase for you know at 240,000 would be a better um, choice than overhauling at 160,000. Yes, that's so that's, that's so sorry, I, I I couldn't I didn't realize I'm mute. I'm sorry. Um, yes, I, Brian is exactly right. I mean, it just doesn't. To, to overhaul this is a lot, um, a lot less value than purchasing a new one. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and one other in in capital expenditures, I guess if we're, I'm on that road is with on page 15 within uh, public safety. There's 57,000 for mobile squad video systems for this next year. Could Mr. Falls, could you enlighten me as to what that is? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, uh, Council, that, that is uh, a replacement of our aging squad video systems. So we currently have six of them, and they are past end of life. The operating system we have for that system is no longer supported, um, and if it fails, it would have to be replaced with a new one. So. Um, that price would include body cameras. Um, so you'd have the squad video cameras in addition to the body cameras. Um, okay. And the body camera basically replaces what we have today as the microphone. So, um, and it's the new operating system. So we would be good to go for several years. Okay. Uh, and, and thanks. And, and just yeah. one more while I'm, in the weeds, which I didn't want to get too far, but on page 12, which is in parks, it, it looks like we're projecting a 25% increase in salaries, and I was just curious as to why that is. I can take that, and Gary can um, follow up. Um, 
it's it's basically just um how um the public works salaries are allocated you know budgetarily you know if you look at that trend on page 12 so and basically it was 31,000 worth of time was spent in 2018 i believe and then 22 last year so it sort of fluctuates a little bit i think we were going to probably take a little closer look at that one and see if maybe we'd want to bring that down and then allocate um obviously they have a little more time than to spend in water or sewer or streets or, or something else but it's all just it's, it's a little harder with the public works employees to try to budget like a half of FTE or something and then maybe only a third of times get spent in parks so that's where you'll see it you know it, it gets to be a little bit of an allocation game and trying to match up where public works you know is spending their time based on you know their the functions they have going on so I don't know if Gary has anything to add to that or no I mean that's what it comes down to basically is what projects we have for the year and uh how much time you know we can allot to that okay thanks uh in in wrap up i agree again previously let's increase the roads if it comes out of reserves or uh, affects cip somewhere i think we can find that twenty five thousand dollar difference and i also agree with not having covid funds accounted for at this stage any It'd be nice to have them for some extra padding, but uh, don't want to see them at this stage. That's all I had. All right. Thanks, John. Uh, Shannon? Oh. Thank you. Um, rather than just scrutinize the road fund and the CIP to determine our preliminary tax levy um, and the two choices that we've been given, I, I think, and I appreciate um, Councilmember Chamberlain's um, focusing in on some of these line items because I'd like to do that too. Um, and the first one I'd like to look at is on page six. The um, the building permit revenue that's projected for 2021 is 650. It looks like 2018 was 788,000. 2019 was 812,000, and from what I've heard, it, it sounds like things are going to be as good or better than they were last year. And I think that number might be a little low at 650. Well, yeah, our council member Bruce and, and council. So I think um, this year we're, we're still doing pretty good um, for 2020. And you can see uh, in that column there, so we budgeted 650 and as, as of 630, we were at 325. So or basically we're at about 50% or, or right on. So, I mean, I know 18 and 19 were probably two of our strongest or, or, or best years. So, we, you know, there maybe would be a little bit of room to go up there, but I don't know how much I'd want to go much more than, you know, 650, seven, or 675, or I, it, it gets to be if all of a sudden it drops off, it's a real shortage, but um, that's, yeah, that's my comments there. Um, the, the second item is on page nine, uh, and it was, actually, I'm not going to mention that, that's, um, hang on one sec. Oh, motor fuel. Um, it looks on page 10, it looks like the motor fuels costs, I mean, gas prices have been coming down and I think that's a line item that we could probably reduce for motor fuel on page 10. Does that make sense? Be because um, it's going up instead of... Oh, the motor fuels. I'm still on, on page 10, the uh, 101, 42, 110, 212, correct? Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, maybe Chief, yeah, whether, I don't know if the Chief falls, what do you want to... Um, jump in. I, I don't know if there's been a little bit different uh, trend in uh, how much fuel is being used under the with the COVID situation or or not. I know some of these um, the bills can lag a little bit too, as far as on on the, when we get them from Mid County and stuff. The the, the fuel vendor, but um, yeah, I mean it does look we could potentially adjust a little bit there. Because it looks like we're halfway through the year and we've only spent seven grand. 
right? Uh, um, that one, yeah. So, so go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. It's hard to know exactly where our billing is at. I think we're a little bit behind because it does lag a bit. Um, I try to be conservative in this line because last year we were short staffed and so we used less fuel. This year we are fully staffed and so we're going to use more fuel. But certainly if if it comes in that the actual is, is low, absolutely we could adjust that. Um, I just want to make sure that we're absolutely up to date with our billing so we, we know exactly where we're at for a percentage. Okay, I, I just like to see that number adjusted because I think it's high. Um, and then on page 12, uh, I had the same comment that uh, Mr. Chamberlain had about the park salaries being $15,000 higher. I think that's the number that can come down. Yeah, that's so something building I think, permit, yeah, which... <laughs> So build, building permit revenue, I think it could go up. And I think those other um, things that I noted can come down. If we could take a look at those and just be a little more accurate. Okay. This is Councilmember Molitor. I'd like to make one additional comment. Sure. Um, Go ahead. Regarding uh, the park, just keep in mind um, the salaries on the park. Um, that's, as Brian pointed out, that's an allocation. So you can decrease the allocation there but it's going to go somewhere else because unless you change the number of FTEs, it, it, it's simply an offset to somewhere else. So um, I'm not opposed to changing it in the parks line, but just keep in mind it, it's going to be a net zero impact. Um, well, Mr. Molitor, just a kind of FYI, I spoke with Brian on that exact same thing as well. And I said, could we maybe look and see, are we maybe under funding, if you will, um, our sewer and water time, and maybe we need to look at those and make sure that those are accurate, um, as well as our parks. But you're right, if it goes from parks to streets, it's a net zero gain or loss. I mean, we, we don't gain anything. Right. But I do want to make you, sure that we are allocating go, our sewer and water time at, appropriately. Right. You're right. Um, if we did that, then it would still get offset then to the sewer and water fees. So uh, I just... Okay which I, I get it's not part of the general fund or not part of the overall levy, but um, I just want to make right. sure people understand that it's not like you just, it, it magically it doesn't, it goes away. It, it just gets shifted, whether it's within the general, within the levy amount or if it's goes to sewer water and paid for a different fund, that's possible, but it doesn't just go away. Right. Right. No, we, exactly. We have, yeah. We have eight full-time staff. They each work 2000 hours a year. It all, and they each get paid X number of dollars per year. I mean, you're not going to, by shrinking one, uh, you're not going to lower our costs. In fact, it'll probably go up since uh, this is the last year of their contract. And and I'm sure they're going to be looking for pay increases for next year that will be coming before the council sometime here in the next X number of months or half a year. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's part of doing business to pay our employees where they chop the pie doesn't matter. So, yeah, I have I have one other comment to make um, about the road budget, the the road funds, and I I think by increasing the permit fees and by decreasing the motor fuels numbers, we can find that twenty five thousand dollars to add to the road fund without increasing the the levy. So I'm. I think with version two of the preliminary tax levy, with those two changes, we could we could easily find twenty five grand to add to the roads fund that way. Okay, all right. Um, so with that, I'll make a few comments. So um, one, I did ask Brian about the thirty five thousand in the parks, and so um, I did ask him to take a look at that. As I previously stated, I want to make sure that we're allocating the. Um, public works uh, time appropriately. Um, if it goes from parks to roads, it's not going to decrease our levy. Um, it's just simply going to, um, as Mr. Molitor pointed out, change where it's being, where the money is coming from, which department it's coming from. So with that, um, I also talked to Brian a little bit about permits, and maybe this is a question for um, David Abel. So, um, I don't know that we should increase it. I'm a little bit leery about that. 
um, only because I'm not sure what the housing market will be doing next year. Right now, it's doing fine. We haven't seen a decrease. But again, next year may be a different story. David, do you have any idea or inkling? Have you talked to builders or to developers? What are they saying? What are the rumblings that you're hearing? Yeah, Madam Mayor and Council, um, I'm hearing a lot of uncertainty right now. Things are really good right now. We have a lot of activity and houses are selling. Um, but there are two phases within Woodland Cove that the master developer is trying to close with national builders. And there's, there's a lot of hesitancy on their part um, nationally with a lot of unknown of what's going to happen with the, the housing market. So. What I'm hearing right now is just a lot of uncertainty at this point. Things are really good now, but they don't know what it's going to look like next year. Okay. So with that, um, I would I would like to see the 650 um, in permit and building permits remain, um, not increase it. Um, but there's a couple things that I think we could do. Is one, um, I don't think we should increase the um, CIP. This coming year in other words rather than going um, I think we should just keep it at the 50,000 and then the other thing we can do is move the $240,000 expense for that new um, piece of equipment in public works to 2021 the other um, equipment or the other CIP items we could if you will uh, fund from the general fund and then we could pay when we do the 2021 equipment certificates. Uh, so that might be an option uh, to save or to it, uh, to save 50,000 or move at least out of that 50,000, move 25 of that into the roads. But still we could cut, cut the, um, cut 25,000 out of the budget. Um, the motor fuels, I think, fine. Um, I don't have a problem uh, taking another look at that. Um, but other than that, um, I think uh, we're pretty close. Uh, I'd like to see it lower than higher, of course. Maybe there'll be some adjustments um, going forward. Um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Anything so, else? Madam Mayor, just, oh, just to clarify, you, you would, um, that piece of equipment would move to 2022 then, correct? Or as far as... Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, move, yeah, move that large piece to leaving, it would only leave us with, what, a hundred and some odd thousand in CIP, and then we could fund that with our reserve fund for 2021, and then we could pay that back when we do an equipment certificate in 2022. Does that make sense? Yes, that does. That timeline would make sense, correct. Okay. Because a lot of times when you're floating these small equipment certificates, if you did like a hundred and sixty or two hundred thousand or even a three hundred thousand dollar equipment certificate, it's really going to end up costing you a lot more than if you save up for a few years and then you do one larger equipment certificate. You kind of get a bit bit better bang for your buck, so to speak. And so if we move the two hundred forty to twenty. And then we add in the 2021 along with the 2022 and float that certificate in 22. I think we get a bit, bit, bit better bang for our buck. And, and Madam Mayor and Council, usually we've tried to uh, wrap those into uh, if we have a street project we're bonding for something. So then you know we're bundled together so you get some more economies of scale or efficiency. So yep, that's correct. Right. Okay. So that's kind of. Um, where I'm at. Anybody else have, have comments one more. or questions? Yes. I have one more comment. Um, and I, I just want to point out some inconsistency in our messaging because when we we're talking about the water tower financing, I heard that our housing market was booming and there was no uncertainty and that it was, you know, we were projecting the same amount of revenues coming in. And but when we talk about the tax levy, we hear that the housing market is uncertain. And I think we need to get on the same page and either our housing market is stable and is booming or it's not. And it can't change when we're talking about water tower financing or versus talking about the tax levy. 
because it benefits the city. It, you know, our, we have to be consistent. And I would still like to see those, the permit fee revenue looked at because I think it's, it's going to come in higher in 2021 than we've projected here. If, well, if, I do if, believe if, when if we you talked assume, about if, our water. No, I'm not done. If, if you assume and you believe what we were told when we were financing the water tower, it will come in higher. Go ahead. So when we talked about the water tower, that was back in January, February. I don't know the exact time frame. Um, and at that time, the whole economy, everything was completely different than it is today. And nobody saw this coming. Nobody knew back in January, February that we were going to be hit with this. Um, we didn't know that. And yet, in spite of that, our housing market has continued to be very good so far. But what David is telling us is the uncertainty comes in next year. We're not sure what will happen and how this pandemic is going to affect the housing market next year. It might be fine. It might continue on an upward scale. There's some uncertainty is what he said. And so we need to heed that and decide, okay, do we take a risk and put in an extra 25000 So rather than 650 we anticipate 675 in in permit fees? Or do we are we a little bit cautious and say, okay, 650, we're gonna go with that. What if they come in at 550? I mean we don't we it's it's always somewhat of a of a guessing game. We simply don't know. And the, so the, that's the projections where I'm that I've I the wasn't projections done. that I've heard. Oh go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Anybody else have comments? No, I, I, I do want to say something if you're done. Sure, go ahead. The, the projections that I've heard in the housing market, that they're, they're projecting that the, the suburbs of Minneapolis are going to see a boom. And I think we're going to see that with people moving out of the city. And the, the markets are already reflecting that. So I just wanted to say that, and that's, I still think we should in, increase that revenue by 25000 and then add that to our sure. road budget. Ma Madam Mayor, right. too, and this, I, this is just what the master developer of Woodland Cove is telling me. I, you know, Shannon, you, you very well could be right, and what you're reading is, is the right thing. I, I was just asked what I've heard. That's what the master development team has been telling me. I could be, that could be completely wrong. So you know, don't, that, that's just what they've told me. So that's, I just wanted to say that. I appreciate that. <laughs> this is council member monitor. I, I would like to add one thing on the building fee item. Um, it, it's not just a, a function of the housing market and we can sit here and discuss all night, which way can go. And I think we all have valid points about, you know, people living in Minneapolis and whatever. Um, but the other function that affects Minnetrista directly is the amount of, buildable space that's out there and I think this is something David can comment on but you think about you know last couple of years we had you know obviously Woodland Cove is the big driver and there's still a couple of, uh, areas there to sell but we also had things like Red Oak well Red Oak is all sold out now so there's no more inventory there um, and I'm not sure the the Mater estate I think that's probably close to being sold out um, but regardless of how the market does nationally or in statewide um, we don't have a lot of subdivision inventory to put housing in right now um, if, if you want to build out here. I mean, obviously, that we're still going to have some houses going up um, here and there, but uh, I think that's another thing that we have to take into consideration is, is it's not just the market overall. Uh, and I think the same is true for um, Hunter's Crest. Um, I think that's the last subdivision there is pretty much sold up. David, I'm not sure about that, but um, I... I Point being is that we have a, a limited amount of inventory uh, available in Minnetrista that's kind of also taken into consideration, regardless of what the market does. Thanks. And, and there's there a, are a few there's units a... left in there are a few units left in Ponds of Hunters Crest, but we there are the, the phases left in Woodland Cove 
just just for perspective, there, there's a 300 and uh, about 343 lots sold in Woodland Cove, and if you know council will recall, there's a total of 1,071 units that that will go in there. So you know we we do have room for for the next couple of years certainly, but you know to your point, Mike, you know eventually you're right we're we're going to you know get to a point where more, more will need to come in so we, but there that's the numbers right now where we stand with Woodland Cove and david have have you heard anything about this subdivision or this PUD that's in the works or it i i don't think the developer has even approached the city yet but there's there are 300 units that are being um proposed and just off of 110 West, and I think you know the property I'm talking about, and the mayor does too. Um, those are 300 units that that could be, you know, they could break ground next year. So I, I think there is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. and I, no, I'm well aware. Yes, I'm well aware. We've talked to the developer. Um, they only have two of. There's actually four, possibly five properties that would be involved with that. Currently, they only have two under contract. They're still talking with the other owners in that area. Um, so yes, we have we we have heard about it. We've seen a concept. They haven't formally submitted anything to the city, um, but yes, we are well aware of that. Okay. So the point is, there, there is capacity, and it, it's conceivable that we could easily hit the permit season at six seventy-five. You say, okay. Um, it's conceivable. I'm not, I'm, I don't know that any of us would argue that it isn't possible. I think it definitely is possible. Um, I think the question is, is the council willing to go that route? Um, raise it a bit. Um, it's a council decision. Um, so do we want to add another 25,000 to the building permit, which would be revenues, and then we add an extra 25,000 to the roads? Uh, where where does the rest of the council weigh in on this, Mr. Trumperlin? I'll go with you first. Well, I question I would have right now is based on the fees that have come in this year and how nor how the construction um, time you know in, in, by months. Obviously, we get to December; it changes things from July. What are we projecting, Brian, at this stage that our numbers are going to fall at for last year's budget? For 2020, you're saying? Um, right. I don't. Or I don't know if I can tell you for 2020. I probably would be trying to prognosticate, like David said earlier. I think I'm, for 2019, I think when I looked at the actuals, I think the second half of the year. Had a little more than the first half because so it, yeah, it's not just a, a monthly or quarterly or comes in an in equal stream so I think if I just use 2019 as a baseline I think there was like a, it was like a 45 55 percent thing there was a little more in the second half of the year but whether that holds for 2020 also again here who knows I guess so based based on that then and we, at the end of June we were basically right at 50 percent if we extrapolate out that the last half of the year will be slightly larger, will come over the 650 for the 2020 budget, then, I mean, if, if based on the economy and the way the market is still holding, interest rates are still great, obviously, then I would not have an issue with putting another 25000 in in uh, projections for building permits for next year. Okay. All right. And um, Pam, where do you stand? How many homes would that be if to add the twenty-five thousand dollars, David? Oh. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, roughly. I mean, it it just varies. Uh, it's got hard to say because if it's townhomes or, you know, the, the percentage of the pie, but it, it, you're not talking about a whole lot of homes at the end of the day. A handful of homes, probably. Like, like ten, six, or seven. David. 
Yeah, yeah I, I'd say t- t- ten, <laughs> 10 or less, t- 10 or less, you, you know, I t- I'd okay. say around 10, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, In then, that case, I right. do think that that is achievable. We have been understating it, which I felt good, you know, being a little bit more cautious with the way things have been going. But I think that's doable with the, adding the 25000 with less than 10 homes. Okay. And uh, Mike, are you okay with that? Uh, no, I'm not. I, I'd rather okay. play it more conservative and have it 650. If it comes, I, if I remember, I'm look, trying to find this right now, but I believe we're we're deficit spending anyhow, um, which is fine. We've had the reserves, but uh, if it comes in better, then we just we're all, our deficit's just a little bit less. But I'd rather not right. count on that. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit leery about that. Well, what I'd like to say is, you know, we don't have to do the final until December, and I'd like to keep track of our current um, building permits and if they're if they do come in, because by by November we should have a really good um, idea in terms of how where we're at with our building permits, and if it looks really strong, then I think I'd be more comfortable going ahead with the um, 675 versus 650. And if it looks like the latter part of the year is going to be lagging and maybe not as strong, then maybe we can, um, then maybe we stick with the 650. I think those are, that's a decision we could actually make um, later on before we do the final um, levy approval. So that's kind of where I'm, um, I'm at. Um, I'd like to keep tabs on that one really close and and see what happens. And I, um, I, I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to make the decision now because it's going it, to, it's going to affect the preliminary levy decision that we make. And I, I, I'm not comfortable waiting until November. I, I think we'll know. Well, I, I, by September first, we should know. We'll have, we'll have I, August results, July and August results by then. And we'll know. Well, we're going to have another budget discussion before then. So I would suggest um, uh, staff and, bring and, staff and, and also, uh, China with, let also, me finish. I, just, I was talking. I, I, was talking. I also, I also, just, I, I, let me also just me. Heard, I also just heard three council members say that they were fine with increasing it to 675. That's a quorum. I didn't agree so, with you doing me. it immediately. <laughs> Excuse me, I was talking, and I'm going to finish. Ms. Bruce, do not interrupt me. As I was saying, trying to say, staff can bring it back both ways. We can look at it both ways. We've given them some ideas in terms of what we would like to see. They can bring it back. We can look at it again, and then we can determine at before September 30th, which way we want to go. I don't think that that's unfair. I don't think that that's contrary to what the council wants. I think it's fair no, to I think say that's these fine. are discussion that's times. Fine. These are discussion times, and everybody can weigh in. And if people want to see something on the, on the budget, want to see it changed, I think it's fair to have those changes made and take a look at them. So and I that, think that's fine. I, I think what, what you had said was that you wanted to wait until November, and that's what I was objecting to. So if, if we're going to look at this in September, I'm fine with that. That wasn't what you had said. What I had said is my preference would be to make sure that we're on course and we would clearly know that the, by November. And then I was also going to say before, before I was interrupted, that I think staff could bring back several, a couple of these different options. So with that, it's 644, almost 645. Are there any other changes you'd like to see to the to the budget? Otherwise, we can be adjourned for a few minutes and come back to our seven o'clock meeting. All right. So with that, um, is there a the staff, do you have something? Oh, I, I think there's a lot. Go ahead, Brian. Oh. 
I was going to say, no, I think there was a lot of good, good feedback on revenue items, you know, such as the building permits, some good uh, look at the CIP, the general fund expenditures, um, good discussion on the, uh, the CR, um, F funds and sort of holding off and, you know, not adding those into the budget and sort of waiting on that. So I think there was a lot of good, um, good feedback. I don't know if Mike, anything else to add to that, Mike Peroni or. Uh, no, I, I agree with you, Brian. Uh, a lot of good comments for us to uh, chew on and, and uh, work on between now and our next city council meeting. Um, I, and as we end here, I'm just going to remind council that the next meeting, the regular city council meeting, is a different meeting with a different number. So you'll have to log off of this one and re-log in uh, with that, with those credentials, and it should be listed at the top of your agenda. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brony. So with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Mr. Uh, Molitor made that motion and Ms. Mortensen seconded that, I think. So all those in favor signify with aye. Mr. Molitor? Aye. Uh, Ms. Mortensen? Aye. Ms. Bruce? Aye. Mr. Chamberlain? Aye. And I'm Lisa Whalen. I motion is approved um, unanimously. So we are adjourned and we will reconvene for our regular meeting at seven o'clock. Thank you very much.